Hi, everybody. I'm Jennifer Tryon. Thank you so much for tuning in tonight. I'm here with Jesse from Make This Universe. Hi. Hello. Uh, we are going to be making candles tonight. And please let us know where you are tuning in from tonight. We are here in Kingston, Ontario, uh, just upstairs from the homemade uh, shop. And if you received your winter subscription box, um, you got one of these candle making kits in it. Uh, if you are not a homemade lifer and don't get a homemade subscription box, um, please still watch along tonight because the candle making process is super cool, super easy. I love that you've put together this kit for us and it kind of gives you everything you need, nothing you don't need to give candle making a try. Uh, because if you're into, you know, all kinds of cool homemade things, um, it's fun to try little, you know, pieces of this and that without having to be totally outfitted at first. Yeah, without having to figure it all out yourself. Okay, so we're going to dive right in. If you got the um, homemade box this year, um, you got a kit uh, in it, and it looks like this. Um, and I love the graphics. Make this scented candle, and then even in the actual Ooh. kit itself, um, you know, a scented candle made by you. Um, which is so true. <laughs> it's so cute. And I love this, a gift to give yourself, something you can make at home and give to someone else. Or if you were just to give this kit as a gift, your friend, whoever you're giving it to can have the fun of the craft and then they can gift the candle to someone or they can keep it themselves. So it's sort of like this chain reaction that could keep yep. on going, right? Yeah, the whole idea behind the kit was to kind of introduce you to candle making without having to do all of the math and science because it does get a little technical. Uh, so this way we've done all the math for you. We've got the correct amount of fragrance for the volume of wax. We've made sure that the wick is matched to the jar diameter. So you don't really have to worry about the hard stuff when it comes to candle making. Okay. And then that's also what makes it such a great gift, right? Is you're just giving someone the experience of making it. They don't have to have the slog of getting on Google and figuring out all the technical details because you know a lot gets lost in the thrill of making yes. when you have to go down the rabbit hole of research <laughs> and also you can end up with kind of disappointing results depending we'll get into it a little bit hopefully as we go along but depending on the type of wax you use the wick in the jar you can actually end up with a candle that doesn't actually burn properly oh so depending on yeah the the thickness of the wick so we've already made sure that your candle is kind of safety tested and it's going to burn beautifully as well. All right. So I'm going to dive into my kit here and ooh, look at all the cute things in here. So let us know if you're, if you've got one of these candle kits, if you do not, we have a few left the subscription box. A couple of people have um, messaged in asking, where can you get the subscription box? Um, and so we're gonna yes and where where can you get the subscription box the subscription box is sold out we will post again when you can get back in on the subscription box um but we do have some of the candle kits left uh online we can throw up a link um for that and i love that you're getting you know you're getting your little packet of wax your cute jar and this is the fragrance right and yep. I'm doing pomegranate and fur, and it smells <laughs> so. Del if you could smell the studio right now, yeah. Because I'm a little bit ahead of you. I've already got yes. one ready to go here. So, because there's some timing things to consider, right? Yeah. So, essentially, how it works the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to wick our jar. So, that simply involves removing the sticker cover. We've already put the wick sticker in the jar for you. Oh, smart. So that's going to hold down the wick so that so it's not going to go floating off. Pull out the paper. Uh, and then, yeah, you're simply going to stick your wick. You kind of want to eyeball it as, as scented as you can get it. Okay. But you still have some wiggle room with the clothes peg later on to center that wick. So you don't okay. have to stress out too much. All right. And then... You can get that ready and then you can kind of put that... Yeah, I would use it as close to the edge. And then you can okay. kind of put that aside um, so that once we're ready to pour... In around 40 minutes, we've got our jar already wicked. We're okay. gonna have to do that kind of in a rush. So step one. Done. Step one is That's done. Easy. Okay. Super easy. And then we get into the kind of finicky part where we're gonna start melting the wax. Okay. So I already have you a little beaker. Ooh, so sciencey. Um, which is super fun. But if you're at home following along, I find the best way to melt the wax is in these uh, mason jars. So kind of these jam jars work really well because mm -hmm. they are heat safe. 
So you can pop that in the microwave or pop it in a double boiler. Um, so that's your second option if you don't have a cute science beaker. Okay. So the quickest way to melt your wax is to use a microwave. Mm -hmm. You can use it in 30 second bursts. Uh, it takes around maybe three minutes, two and a half minutes to melt. And you just want to stir between each burst. Okay. Just to make sure it's kind of uniformly melted. All right. So I'm going to bring this to the microwave. We brought our microwave from our kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> and so 30 second intervals. Yep. 30 second intervals. I think that's me. I'll go. Take that off. Alarm. Okay. 30. So the lovely thing about the soy wax that we use in our kits is that it is microwave safe. Okay. There are some soy wax that you can get that won't love being a microwave, but the great thing about our kit is we got that nice beginner friendly wax. Yeah. So you can also use the double boiler method. So you would melt it kind of how you melt chocolate when you're baking. Yeah. So you get a little metal bowl or mm -hmm. heat safe bowl. You pop that over a pot of boiling water. You pull the wax in that bowl and then you turn on the heat. Once that water starts to boil, the wax will melt. Okay. So essentially, like chocolate chips in there. Exactly. Or Indirect heat is the best way to melt it. Okay. So I've got 30 seconds, but it still looks. You got to keep going. So should I stir this? <laughs> yeah, you can stir in between. And the great thing about having a little candy or meat thermometer handy is it works as a great tool for this process. So okay. you can stir oh, yeah, it. Oh, yeah. It's looking a little more melty. Yeah. These you can pop do, it back in. These do look like white chocolate chips. Like I want to. Yeah, maybe don't eat them. No. <laughs> <laughs> Not suggested. All right, another 30? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then, yeah, so once that's fully melted, we will be moving on to the first uh, part of the process where we're just waiting. Okay. So most of the process of candle made it, making is waiting for the <laughs> wax to be at the right temperature. So the first waiting period is we're waiting for the wax to reach around 130 Fahrenheit, but you don't have to worry about that. The way that I have simplified it is- what you. Once your wax is fully melted, you mm -hmm. just wait eight minutes. Eight, oh, sorry. I'm going to go over here. And then, uh, we've got Amanda behind the scenes here. Can you post a link? Um, someone's just asking where the uh, candle kits can be purchased. So we'll throw that up in case you don't have one, but you're interested because this is pretty cool. All right. And I would say it's kid friendly too, especially like if mom is there or it's a really fun activity for kids as well because... It's, it's just, all laid out, right? Yeah, and you can just use the microwave, so it is a little safer. Yeah. Safer than using the double boiler. So the first period of the candle making is waiting for the wax to reach that temperature so that we can add the fragrance. And the reason that we want to wait a little bit is to make sure that we don't burn off all the fragrance immediately. Oh. Oh, so if the little fragrance, like the... Is it like essential oils or something? In it's here? a something mix. Like that it's a blend. Okay. Yeah. So it's it's a blend of fragrance oils and essential oils. Okay. And so if it touches the the scalding hot wax, then it will it will tend to burn off. Kind of like we want to reserve a little bit of the fragrance oil for when we're actually lighting the candle. Ooh, look at this now. It's getting there. Yeah. So a little more. So probably one more. 30 second 30 burst. 30 second burst. And yeah. I'm kind of getting the stuff off the side here. Is that? Yeah. Yeah, you can use a spatula. Or, you know, if you do have some uh, hard bits on the side, you can just kind of leave them. Oh, yeah. They'll just kind of come down. Yeah. All right. You'll, you'll notice in the last burn, it'll all be really um, okay. mol molten wax. Yeah. So, yeah, the reason why we don't want to add that fragrance oil in right as you're removing it from the microwave is because it will burn off. And that's why we wait the eight minutes. And why not just three minutes on high honestly we don't want to overheat the wax okay so that's also why you would use the double boiler and you'll notice in the instructions which by the way if you miss anything in this video or you want to review anything we've said it's all in the instruction booklet that's good um so yeah the reason um we don't want to overheat it is because it just will prevent the wax from having that super smooth top so that's just how they manufacture the soy wax. It has its own limitations of how hot it can get. So there we go. That looks pretty good. Okay. And so we're not worried about the stuff on the sides, or can no, I? No, they'll just like... they'll just hang out there. And, okay. Yeah. All okay. right. Yeah. So we can switch over here. So this we want to now, like you said, go by the timer, or go by the thermometer, or go by time. I would say just go by time. We can throw a thermometer in there just to double check. But I find, you know, I've done multiple tests with different vessels and eight minutes is 
you'll be well within the range of when is a good time to add fragrance oil. Okay. We want the fragrance oil to bind to the melted wax. And so we don't want the wax to obviously be fully set up yet, um, but we don't want it to burn off. And that's that sweet spot around 130, 140. Okay. Fahrenheit. If you're just tuning in, I'm uh, joined by Jesse from Make This Universe. And we are making, oh, this is the, this is the, fame, the clay face mask. The, the, fey, the clay face mask. You put together all kinds of great little kits. We do. We have a lot available. Yeah. Yeah. It's so cool. Um, the one we're doing tonight is the Make This Candle. And if you got the winter subscription box uh, from Homemade, then you have it in your kit. Uh, if you didn't get the subscription box, no sweat. There's a few kits left. Um, Amanda's throwing up the link uh, momentarily. And we have, I don't know, maybe a dozen left. So if you're wanting one or two, um, these make for great little gifts great you know i love that you can either give the candle as a gift after exactly. you do the craft which is pretty fun or you give the kit as a gift and then they can do the craft and either keep the candle for themselves or they have a gift to give someone which is pretty cool cute little date night activities like two of you could easily do the process together you know one person's reading the instructions the other one's doing all the steps so fun little kind of experience in a box is how i like to think oh about it oh my gosh if my <laughs> husband's watching he's like no, you know, they don't have to do anything. It's already done. He's like, go ahead. It's fine. <laughs> I'll you, just you read the instructions. You yeah. can do it. Yeah. <laughs> but I bet you he'd want to light that thing later. Exactly. Exactly. You never know. Uh, okay. We'll put up the link. So right now we're in the process of waiting for our wax to like cool a bit. Um, so you can see the temperature there. It's going down. If you wanted to hurry the cooling along, yeah, what would so you say? One thing you could do is just give it a gentle stir. Mm -hmm. um, that will definitely bring the temperature down quicker. We definitely don't want to aggravate the wax and introduce any air bubbles. Nothing really bad will happen. It's just we don't want to whisk the wax. I don't want to see, you know, right. vigorous stirring. Um, the other thing about soy wax is it can be a little tricky to get a smooth top. Now, for cosmetic purposes, I obviously want us to all, all have these beautiful smooth tops. So here's an example of a smooth top that she's talking yep. about. When you're pouring it in the candle, there's no like ripples, No right? lumpy bumpiness. Yeah, nice smooth top. Um, and so again, the more gentle we are during the process of making the candle, the better our chances are for that beautiful smooth top finish. But again, if you do want to, if you do want to kind of speed up the process and you have that candy thermometer or meat thermometer available. Yeah, you can stir it until it reaches that temperature. And again, what temperature are we looking for here? We're looking for anywhere between 140 and 130 Fahrenheit. Okay, yeah. all right. We're at around 160 something right now. So we're very spoiled when it comes to candles. Sometimes when we go to the store, we see a candle, they all look like smooth tops, yep. but that's not a given. No. And don't beat yourself up if your candle top isn't, per at least, well, I might beat myself up, but I'm going to try not to beat myself <laughs> up if mine's not perfectly smooth. I do say in the instruction booklet that this is also a, an exercise in accepting, you know, what the, what the outcome is going to be yeah. um, and embracing the fact that you're going to make something unique and it's going to be a beautiful candle that you can, you know, tell your friends, I made that, you know, they go to they come into your house, they see you have this beautiful candle, and you're like, I totally made that. I love that. And everybody who is in lots of our homemade events, you know, loves dabbling in all kinds of different things. Exactly. Maybe you're, you know, a card maker or a scrap maker, or maybe you're, maybe you're a quilter. I mean, you love quilting too. I love too. quilting. Quilting is my first love. Yeah. Right? I mean, lots of us are <laughs> in that boat too. But it doesn't mean, like, but we're creative people because we like all of this kind of stuff. So that's what the subscription box was really all about, is kind of giving you a little taste of so many different things. Tell us a little, a few things, a few other kits that you make. We saw the clay face mask. Yes. So we have, uh, I think, four kits right now. We started with a natural deodorant kit, which we still have some of. So you can customize your own formula. That's really cool. fun. Then we made our candle kit during the pandemic. So those have been amazing. We were the best seller on Etsy for a couple of years wow. as well. So super proud of our candle making kits. And we do seasonal fragrances as mm -hmm. well. So every, you know, every few months we're bringing out a new fragrance. We're coming up with lilac and bergamot for Mother's Day. So that's really exciting. And then okay. we also have a clay face mask kit. Cool. To me, that is our ultimate self-care kit. Right. So you're going to get everything you need to make six to 12 custom clay face masks. Uh -huh. 
and you're also going to get a masking brush. So I'm going to show you some of these. Let's let's. I'm going to go right to your website so everyone can. Yeah, see. you're going to get a masking brush, and you're also going to get a facial round to remove your mask once you're done masking it out. And then we also give you three botanical extracts in the clay face mask kit, mm -hmm. so that you can actually customize each mask. Um, so yeah, you can basically learn what's going to work for your skin. I love it. And then we also just released our very popular DIY necklace kits. Okay. Those are a big hit on TikTok. Jane, <laughs> Jane Z is loving the necklace kits. Oh, nice. So you're going to get freshwater pearls. You're going to get a gold plated chain. And you're basically just going to get to bead the afternoon away. I love that. And that's adjustable length as well. So you could do choker. You could do up to 18 inch length. And great quality beads. We use Czech glass seed beads, freshwater pearls and then gold plated charms. This is so cool. And it comes like this, you guys, in this little kind of like message in a bottle cork. Um, you can you can see, make this beaded necklace and everything is in there, including the chain and all of those beads, the findings, everything. Super fun gift Love as it. well, yeah. Yeah, very cool, very cool. So I know how expensive, expensive it gets to get into all these new hobbies, which I'm sure you realize oh. this is why you did the homemade box is so that we can all try these hobbies without having to get a whole new stash. I know because that's what I always end up doing. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. oh my gosh, I want to try, like I did like a watercolor and brush lettering and I love that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, like the, the brush lettering, it was like, I, I got to do it. And then you buy every single Everything. pen and every single kind of paper and all this kind of, and it's like, Really, I just needed these five things. Yeah. And so you can learn from our, <laughs> you can benefit because we're just putting the what you need right now in the kit. So I think you can probably go ahead and add your fragrance. Okay. We're in the 140 zone. Okay. Um, I've just been stirring to get it down to temperature for the purposes of today. But if you were at home, again, you just want to set an eight minute timer and kind, and just of, let it kind of leave the wax alone. The less you disturb it, the more chance you have of that smooth top. Okay. So yeah, you can actually use the thermometer to stir. So once you add it in, just you pour it. Yeah. And again, you might have a roommate or a partner who's maybe fragrance sensitive. And in that case, feel free to only add in half the fragrance. Oh. But we go with the maximum fragrance load for the volume of wax. <laughs> I know it's really, it's like, what do I do? With it's this like bottle? an edible smell. It's I know so good. it's like, I want to, yeah. mm. <laughs> There we go. You can use that. All right. That's great. So again, if you uh, have anyone in, in the household that's maybe a little bit sensitive to fragrance. Or you could just leave it out. Exactly. Yeah. Add in half, you know, still, you're still going to get a beautiful uh, hot throw and cold throw. We can talk about those terms a little bit later, mm -hmm. um, but it, it'll be, um, it'll be a little bit less. Okay. So yeah, you probably want to say that for a minute. Oh yeah? Yeah. Okay, this is, these are good tips, you guys. See, I would have just put it in there and then all my fragrance would have been just on the left side yeah, of the candle. Yeah, you just want it to bind, bind to the wax and be kind of evenly distributed. Okay. Um, and then once this is done, we really only have two more steps. Okay. Um, so once we're done stirring in the fragrance for around a minute, we are going to go and embark on our second period of waiting. Um, the second stretch of waiting, we're going to be um, keeping an eye on our wax at all times. Okay. And you do not want to take your eye off your wax. So okay. if, even if any of you are busy making your candle right now along with us at home, maybe just listen to us, but do not take your eye off of your wax. What are we looking for? We are looking for the perfect pouring temperature. Okay. Now you can either use a thermometer to do this, but I love to use the visual cues as well. Mm -hmm. We are waiting for this wax to get extremely cloudy. Now okay. it's a really fine line because if it gets too cloudy, it might actually set up in this beaker and oh, then we yeah. don't have a candle. Then we have a science candle. Exactly. Which is not a wickless what, exactly, science candle. Which is not what we want. <laughs> so we want to pour it as it's setting up, but not when it's too molten. And again, the only reason we're doing that is to get a nice smooth top. <laughs> if you're in a rush, something comes up and you want to get this over and done with, feel free to pour it right now. Um, you might just have a little lumpy bumpy top. And then later on, you can always hit that with a hair dryer, make it nice and smooth. Oh, well, yeah. that's good. And could we, I was going to say, if if we're lighting the candle, like once it's done, do we care if the top is perfectly smooth? No. Or do you care if the top is smooth if you're giving it as a gift or you're selling it? Or... For sure. I mean, I think if you're gifting it, we have an expectation of a nice smooth candle top. Yeah. But that's actually a bit of a hangover from paraffin 
wax candles. Because this is not, tell me the difference between if you're, if anyone's like listening and going, well, what's the difference between this and a candle that I would get at the store that like you say is a paraffin wax candle? So yeah, largely speaking, um, those big box stores often have paraffin wax candles. Now paraffin is a byproduct of the crude oil process. And so, you know, a lot of, um, a lot of us are looking for alternatives mm -hmm. to petroleum based products. So soy wax is a really good alternative to paraffin wax. It's a little healthier, it's a cleaner burn, and it's a renewable resource. But soy wax does have a very different molecular structure to paraffin wax. Mm -hmm. It has kind of a crystalline structure. So soy wax actually naturally wants to form kind of craters it just doesn't want to be smooth, okay. unlike paraffin. So we've worked hard to develop a soy wax. Or there's, there's companies developing soy waxes that have the properties of, of paraffin. Um, but again, it is a little trickier to pour a smooth top. Could we liken this to if you were to buy something that was organic and yes. maybe had a little, like, you know, <laughs> not the perfect color yeah, exactly. or a little bruise or something like that, but it's still perfectly good it still is going to make a beautiful candle yeah and it's going to burn beautifully it's going to release that fragrance and fill your room you know to the same extent as any other candle you buy it's just that smooth top that i think people are expecting in the yeah. store okay yeah all right so we're waiting for this to bind how long we're going to wait, generally speaking, around 20 minutes, but okay. I did jump ahead. Yes, we got one. Um, and I have one kind of on the go that we already started so that I can kind of so show this folks. this one has to go into the 20-minute waiting room. That's the 20-minute 20 20 minute waiting room. Yep. Now, right now, we are at 108. Okay. Too cold? So we are a little too hot right now. Okay. As you can see, this wax that I've melted uh, before is still pretty see-through if that's if that's the right word mm -hmm. you can kind of see my fingers through it it's not the version of cloudy that i would be looking for if i wanted to pour this candle so what i'm going to do to kind of speed this up is you want I'm, my pyrex dishes or i think if i jar i think if i um stir it we'll get there pretty quickly okay Generally, pouring temperature is around 100, 105. Or at 110. And I actually think it'll be interesting for folks to see the how it goes from this to cloudy. Because I find this is the this is the part where people doubt themselves. They're like, is it too cloudy? Is it not cloudy enough? Yeah, so it'll be good for us to see. Might be interesting to watch. Allison's saying candle making is intense. And Donna's saying, uh, this would be great smell-o-vision. It I, would. It smells agree, so good yeah. in here. Candle making is intense and, you know, the learning curve is steep and that's what makes the kit so nice. Yeah. I know I'm getting a little in depth now because, you know, I get excited and I have all this knowledge about candle making, but the booklet that comes with the kit is a lot more straightforward. Yeah. <laughs> and here's the thing. We're, we're talking about candle making, so please impart your knowledge on us. By the time we get to where we're pouring our own, we'll be like, wax, cloudy, got it. <laughs> exactly. You know? I've done this a lot of times. So yeah. I kind of know my way around. Um, so the other thing to get into when it comes to candle making is fragrance, right? Okay. That's half the battle of making your own candle is ending up with a smell that so you just good. love to, you know, you love to get home and light that candle. Yeah. So one of the great things about fragrance making is you can actually get into fragrance making quite quickly. There are some perfumery basics, which once you're familiar with them, you can get going and start making your own fragrances. Okay. Um, so the way that I would summarize perfumery super quickly is all perfumes or fragrances are just what we would call an accord or a blend of three or more ingredients. Okay. And the way that you make a balanced accord is with a top, middle, and base note. Okay. So a top note is usually like a citrus note. Mid notes can be floral. And then base notes are like your musks, your vanillas. So what if we just buy a bag of soy wax Yeah, and we have some essential oils sitting around at home? Isn't that good? You could, you could try. We might, you know, <laughs> like sometimes. I'm never going to discourage you from, from exploring. All right. Yeah. But. But it is important to make sure when you're making a candle that you have the right amount of fragrance for the volume of wax ah, and that that's okay. matched to the jar diameter. And we could go really deep. So. 
generally it's true like this this vial looks very specific it is very specific yeah so it's around 10 percent fragrance load again i don't want to make it sound too intense yeah but it's good to know that this is there's a reason why you get this much and that much. exactly there is a rhyme and a reason behind what we've mm -hmm. done so we're at slow one to seven maybe we will do a switcheroo into the sure. pyrex so i'm just doing a little trick to cool down this wax so we can kind of see how it goes and Bigger actually i can area? I can start to see, I don't know if we're going to be able to see this on camera, but well, I can see a little tension in the surface. Like, I don't know if you can see oh, the that little it looks tiny like... floating flakes on the surface. Mm -hmm. So that is just going to get more and more intense as this cools down. I'm wondering how close we are. We're at 106. So we're literally a couple, you know what? I can start to see, you can kind of see l tiny little flakes. Oh, yeah. So I don't know if, how we can show that to everyone at home. They're going to believe us. <laughs> but we're starting to see... Um, we probably zoom in as much as we can here. Small, tiny flakes. And would it help if we didn't have it on white? On white, yeah. Probably really, the, the most minuscule size flakes, but those will continue to form bigger and bigger flakes. And that will contribute to the to the cloudiness. And I'm just going to keep stirring. And as my instruction booklet says, once you've hit 20 minutes, you can get out your stirring stirring tool and keep stirring, just to get it down. Let's see what it looks like on the. Nope. Mm. There we go. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah. But certainly on my, from my perspective, especially from the side, you can see we are going into um, cloudy territory. Yeah, if you see it from the side, for sure. And we could even kind of compare it to the one that's Compared in the waiting Compared to the one room. that's still waiting. Yeah, this one looks, <laughs> looks like we're looking at pee. I know. Sorry. <laughs> but you can start to see this is getting more cloudy, right? There we go. So you can see those flakes. You know, I'm now when I'm stirring, I can actually see the flakes moving. With yeah, the, it looks like a, there's a little um, like tornado going on. Exactly. There. So I'm definitely getting to the right temperature. So again, this is really the 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 most uh, kind of important part of the process is making sure that we're pouring once it's nice and cloudy. So this is great for you guys to see at home just so that you've eliminated any um, ambiguity from this part of the process and you'll have confidence at home when you make your kit that, mm -hmm. you know, you're pouring at the, at the right temperature. It looks like there's little like specks of like sugar in there. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's specks. It's tiny, mm -hmm. tiny, tiny little flakes floating around. Yeah. And it'll even start to harden and like, on the stirring tool. This one looks translucent, like clear. Exactly. This one looks like it's getting cloudier and cloudier. Like this looks like apple juice, you know what I yes. mean? Yes. Whereas this That's one... That's a better comparison. <laughs> and yes, yeah, someone says it looks, looks more viscous and that's exactly right. It, it kind of starts to get quite thick and quite resistant. Um, and that's why you want to keep an eye on it because it is that fine line between it starting to set up in the jar but it's really getting close at this point if there's any left in the jar on that i'm just gonna like allison said i'm gonna like do my eyebrows after <laughs> i'll just wipe that end of the thermometer and... <laughs> so another little trick um which maybe i can talk about now before we pour is that um you can get a paper towel handy so that right after you pour your candle, you can actually wipe out that mason jar. And that's just going to save you some cleanup. Yeah, because it's much easier yeah. to wipe out something when it's wet and before it hardens. Or like, you know what? You can also pop it back in the microwave. Yeah. And then wipe it out with that paper towel. Okay. So there we go again. And if I were to use something, like if I didn't have a mason jar and I'm literally using like a, a glass measuring cup. Is Those this, work great. So you can get this clean and it's not like you can use it in the kitchen afterwards. Absolutely. Uh, soy wax, unlike paraffin wax, you know when those uh, a paraffin wax candle like melts on your countertop and mm -hmm. you have to scrape it mm -hmm. soy wax is not like that you can actually clean it up with soap and water yeah so really easy cleanup i think a lot of people don't know that about soy wax candle making they think like there's going to be a big cleanup operation but mm -hmm. soap and water you'll be fine okay or if you use anything you basically have to throw it out afterwards exactly yeah no you're we're totally 
totally safe, food safe. You can use everything on Okay, that's so good. I think we're getting really close. And I think this mat was a good idea because you can kind of see the difference between how cloudy the pouring temperature wax versus is this one. versus the one that we have Still just have melted. Time. Yeah, exactly. Want more paper towel? So I think, and you can actually see that it's starting to harden on the edges of the glass. So I'm ready pour. to go. Yeah? I'm ready to go. Can I? Yeah, you go ahead. Is there so any trick to pouring? You just want to aim between the wick and the edge of the edge of the jar. And as you pour, you'll see it starts to actually go very, very um, white on the side of the colder jar. And you just want to go slowly. You don't want to, you know, you don't want to throw it in there and get any splash. Um, you can fill it up. I, I do overfill the wax just so you guys get, you know, you can fill that jar right up. But that looks beautiful. And you can see, I'll turn this uh, candle around. You can see on the sides how it's already starting to look more like white white exactly so now that you've poured your candle you have a couple of minutes to center your wick oh so you just want to eyeball from the top down and just yeah make sure it's centered that looks perfect you don't have to be too per i mean that's yeah you were well within the so there we go and so now again wait now we are going to wait. This so is the I, hardest I, wait. I kind of like the idea of maybe doing like four or five of these at one time. Because while this one's in the waiting room, you're off microwaving the next exactly. one. And then this one, you know, oh, well, maybe that would be a juggle. But <laughs> someone, we have a question. Is beeswax good for candles? I love beeswax for candles. Again, it's that renewable resource. That's a great alternative to paraffin wax. I do find that beeswax is not going to be as good as bind at binding to the fragrance oil. And oh, the so if you oil. don't want a fragrance, beeswax, no problem. But beeswax has a lovely natural smell. Okay. So generally speaking, if you do see a beeswax candle, it's going to be that natural candle that doesn't have the added fragrances and essential oils. So if you want to have fun at home with the fragrance side of candle making, I would probably do soy. But if you want to do shape candles, like mold candles, yeah. Beeswax is beautiful. Nice. Absolutely beautiful. Yeah. Allison's saying this is the cutest girl's birthday party activity. It tr it really just give everyone a kit like at their table yeah. spot and yeah. That's and with idea. the microwave option, mm -hmm. it's honestly so straightforward and you know, very safe. Very yeah. safe for people to figure out how to do it. They're not using the microwave. I mean, they're not using the stove top or and you could see like with a mason jar like this or a glass jar or whatever, um, there's not really any spill because it never like gets that like Hot. high no, yeah yeah and yeah. it's not overflowing in the in the uh in the jar yeah these jam jars are the perfect size for the four ounces of wax so i'm actually just going to wipe this down so well, that's still hot we yeah. don't have to do any we don't have to do any cleanup that being said if you were to have a little bit of molten wax left over the one thing you don't want to do is pull that down your drain obviously pour okay. it down your sink we don't want any hard wax in our sink and that's again why i probably want to wipe this down before i take it to my sink to okay. to give it a proper clean so that's all done that's all wiped down okay and there we go excellent and this is really starting to look more yeah like it's a it's it's like the color difference like is remarkable you know like it was just here a few minutes ago very cool very cool. And so how long before it's totally set and ready to burn? Um, I say in the kit, a minimum of two days, because mm -hmm. I know from experience how excited we get to complete our projects yes. and show them off. Um, and maybe in the case of the candle, you want to give it away. That is a good uh, two days minimum, I would suggest. But you can actually cure your soy candle for up to two weeks. Again, remember, soy is only trying to be like paraffin wax. So one of the natural um, parts of working with soy is it does take a little longer to cure. So it takes longer for the soy wax to harden to its final kind of state and just to do the final binding with the fragrance. Really, the only loss of lighting it, like let's say in two days versus two weeks, is your hot throw will be a little better. Mm -hmm. And I can talk a little bit about hot throw and cold throw. Mm -hmm. So cold throw is when you pick up the candle, kind of you're in the store, you see a candle you like, you pick it up and you give it a whiff. Mm -hmm. That's cold throw. Okay. So that's how the candle smells unlit. Ah. 
then hot throw is how the candle smells once it's been lit. So you can have a deceptively strong cold throw. And then once you light your candle, you're like, oh, I'm not really smelling anything. Mm -hmm. That happens a lot with, you know, the budget candles that are paraffin wax. You'll get a big cold throw and then you won't get a lot of hot throw. So the only thing that's going to get better and better with curing time is that hot throw. Okay. Um, so a couple of people have questions about adding things in. Absolutely. So gems, molds, yes. little sprigs of pine or rosemary or something. What do you suggest? I mean, this is where you can have so much fun, even with our kit, like hack the kit, definitely. <laughs> I would be a little cautious on any dried leaves or petals just because they can be flammable. Okay. But definitely put, make a little spell candle, you know, like put a rose quartz in there. Um, I love the idea of stones and gems. Absolutely. You can even do like a hidden message candle. You know, you could put oh, like fun. beads that say a word. I mean, there's honestly endless, endless combinations. Right. Right. Um, I definitely would be careful for any dried petals, um, but it's not out of the question. Mm -hmm. um, especially if you're kind of more around the sides. Exactly. Um, the other thing is if you didn't want to use the jar, like, you know, I love the idea of putting a candle in an old teacup. Absolutely. Or like some cool little mold that you might have or something that you could upcycle. If the diameter is relatively similar to the diameter of this jar, absolutely. I think a teacup candle would work very cute with this. Mm -hmm. And this is four ounces, so I think that's probably perfect for a teacup. Yeah, I mean, it might go a little wider, but <laughs> yeah. it just won't be as tall. But Exactly. You know. And as far as molds go, if you did want to get into kind of the shaped candles that are very in right now, you would probably want to just make sure you got a soy wax specifically for mold making, which is easy to find online. And I think you can get molds on Etsy. Oh, I'm yeah. pretty sure there's there's some beautiful yeah. molds on Etsy, so you can explore that as well. And what if we're like, okay, I'm hooked. I want to go down the rabbit hole. Mm -hmm. I don't, I need more than a starter kit. I feel that so deeply. <laughs> um, there are some amazing Canadian suppliers where you can get all the bulk ingredients you need. And I actually have a blog post on my website where I tell you all my secrets, oh, essentially. I'm going to show you it. So it's makethisuniverse.com. Mm -hmm. uh, you navigate to our blog and mm -hmm. you will probably find it's one of our most recent blog posts. Candle making nine essential tips for candle making side hustle or hobby. Exactly. You know it so well. So I'm going to literally dish all my industry insider secrets from my many years of candle making. I'm going to give you suppliers for all of your materials, including your jars, your wicks, your wax, your fragrances. Uh, and then I'm also going to give you just some tips, maybe some terminology that you should familiarize yourself throw, with. I see hot throw, cold throw, burn test, melt pool. <laughs> exactly. So you don't have to really... Sweating. I've done all the hard work for you. <laughs> this is a great resource for sure. It's makethisuniverse.com and then you'll just hit uh, blog right up here at the top. And it's basically the first one. It's our latest blog. Yeah. yeah. And of course, we're going through a couple... Uh, <laughs> where to buy supplies, not Amazon. It's true. You know, we're all guilty of shopping oh, on Amazon. Absolutely, like yeah. we, we all do love it. But when you decide to purchase something from, from you or me, you're helping you and me and to kind of keep this kind of grassroots stuff going, right? And I do think specifically with candle making, you do want a reputable supplier specifically for your fragrances because that is going to be something you burn in your house. And you want to make sure that that fragrance has been tested for safety and is, is healthy. My daughters always want to burn candles and they always want to go to like home sense or somewhere, you know, and they're like, look, this candle's only $4.99. And I'm always like, mm, you don't know what's in it. Yeah. And they want to light it and they want to just waft it in. And I'm always like, what are you doing? I, I, I yeah. worry about that. Yeah. In the long run, on the blog posts, uh, with the suppliers that I've given you folks, you're going to save money as well because you're not going to have to, you know, you're not going to have failed tests right. because my suppliers are going to make sure you get all the right um, ingredients. Nancy's got a good suggestion, and I think the answer is absolutely yes. Could you add vinyl outside the jar? A hundred percent. Your cricket for sure. I love that idea, and I encourage you to do so. And please tag me. Yeah, me too. On Instagram, because I would love to see that. Tell us your Instagram. Make this. Universe. Make this universe is our Instagram, and our uh, our jars and the kits do come pre-labeled. But feel free to add your own label. I love that idea. Yeah, yeah. Or like make a note name. and then gift that yeah. with your thoughtful note. Nice. Yeah, for sure. For I sure. These ideas. I think these are great. And you know what? There's no end to what 
the people out there in the homemade groups and stuff will do. They're very, very creative, already, super, super talented. Yeah, already we've gotten so many good ideas on yeah. how to customize this even further, especially if you're gifting it or just to make the process a little bit more unique to you. For sure. And so when do we cut down the wick? Is that after the two days or the two weeks? Is it right before you're going to burn it? What, what do you suggest for that part? So that's a great question. And that actually brings me to a good point about candle safety. And this is something that I did not know as someone that loves candles before I made them myself is that every single time you light your candle, you need to be trimming the wick to one quarter inch. Sorry, what? Above the surface of the candle. And that's to prevent mushrooming, tunneling, and just to make sure that your candle actually burns safely. So wait, wait a minute. <laughs> Every time you're supposed to cut it? Yes. So even if your candle, let's say, is hot. Because my wicks, wicks go like this. That's so what that's mushrooming is? mushrooming. And it's going to affect how clean... Did you know this? I know. But my wicks always do this. And then I'm like, okay, I guess I'll just light that side of the wick. No, so you're supposed to... Trim your wick every time you light your candle. And here's a great hack. Everybody needs to leave a little like <laughs> heart or something for this hot tip. There's actually a I great... I want to see them all floating because yeah. <laughs> that's good. I find that using nail clippers is the best way also to do it. Also a good tip. I'm full of tips. I'm full of tips. Um, so yeah, in, in terms of the candle making kit, you probably want to trim this wick to a quarter inch in minimum or max yeah minimum two hours like okay. you really want to make sure that that wax is hard if you trim it too soon the wick may just get displaced and then right. you're going to be off center and because once we touch this wick it's going to wobble around. around and then you're going to have like a hole. a little crater around that yeah. exactly so you probably want to wait a couple hours before you trim it um or yeah in two days trim it then okay so this really is a little bit of an exercise in Patience. Slow and steady. I know it's hard for us Slow crafty people. Yeah, we just want to get there. We go, we like to go full steam ahead yeah, into our new want... obsession. That's right. <laughs> I know. I totally oh my know. gosh, that's so funny. <laughs> um, how's this one doing? I can see the little um Oh, I think we're actually getting there. Yeah, I can see it kind of starting to form. So you already see, this is why we wick our jar first, because it comes so it happens so quickly, and you want to make sure that that jar is ready. So perhaps I'll move these out the way. Sure. Um, 90s. Oh, so we're really close to temperature. So the, the reason why this is probably not as cloudy is because we weren't stirring it. Okay. Maybe the edges are a little cooler. So this one might set up a little quicker. If you want to go ahead and stir, yeah, we're sure. at 102. So we've got a, uh, Chris has got a really good question. Once the candle burns down, can you reuse the vessel? Absolutely. You can 100% reuse this vessel. Um, one of the amazing parts of candle making is the vessel choice, right? And I really wanted to choose a vessel that was reusable. I love, you know, getting bulk spices. I like to have my little cuttings on the window in summer. So I'm always looking for jars. I also love the idea of doing like a 20 wick down a big log <laughs> where I, I roll all the wax down I in know, and then... I know. Look at my Thanksgiving I, that's table. Maybe my next kit. Yeah, log, log candle kit. Log, yeah, like we're just, to, you know, you know what I mean. I, you guys know what I mean, right? So yeah, hundred percent reuse your jars. Um, you can also reuse them for making your own candles, hundred percent. Yeah. So there we go. This is getting. See, that's super that's cloudy. something I would do. It would be I'd literally take my spaghetti pot or something and fill it with the wax and just the biggest vessel I possibly could for a big like 20 wick outdoor that's the thing it's true it would be tricky to get the wick right but I'm I'm not gonna I'm gonna encourage you to try I know yeah because that's fun we'll so start yeah here. this one is setting up so you see how the surface kind of mm -hmm. has some solid flakes yep I see all right so we're getting there this is good and, and I can look at that of... look at that one over there it's almost totally white and you know what? Super smooth top on that on your first pull. Oh, he did you did a really good job. That looks amazing. And again, even if your candle does not have smooth top. I'm going to credit the good wax you put <laughs> in the kit. You still did a great job. Uh, one thing you may have realized from my spiel is that it is quite tricky to master the art of candle making. So even if your candle isn't super smooth, it's still going to work perfectly and it's still something that you made. And it's still going to smell delicious. still going to smell delicious. And the if you do have a kind of a bumpy top, how, like is it really going to last that long once it starts burning down? 
No, it'll it'll even out after its first burn. And again, yeah. you can just hit it with a, a hairdryer and high heat and it might even out. Yeah, that's good. I think you might be ready to pour. Yeah, I think so. Because that's that. looking really cloudy. I'm seeing some super solid flakes and it's hardening on the tool, which are all the visual cues that we're looking for. So here we go. Oh, oh. There we go. Okay, pour number two. Tension. I love it. <laughs> and see how it starts to immediately go a little, it starts to set up in that jar, just because that jar is going to be colder. And get every last drop. I love it. Yeah, why waste any? And then we're going to do our trick of yep, wiping, wiping out. that out while we still can. And like, look at the one we poured before. It's already at this stage. Wow. We now, are so good at candle making. Now you've made multiple candles. I'm a multiple candle maker. Multiple maker. Candle maker. What does this make me? What's the, <laughs> the name? Is there like a... You're just a... I think it's a chandler. Is that what it is? Chand chandler. Yeah. Or sh yeah, I think that's what it is. So yeah. you can add that now to your... Lincoln bio. Yes, Chandler. right. Uh, Kathy's oh. saying trimming your candle is a must. Wick trimmers work very well as well. Yes, you can get wick trimmers, I think, on Etsy as well. Those work great, but, you know, if you don't have those specialized tools. Oh, yeah. we have to center the wick. I forgot. I got so, like, high on the hog where I, just... I really dropped the ball there. Oh, no, we're fine. Perfect candle. Can't making. really go wrong. <laughs> but, yeah, nail clippers is my best hack if, if you don't own a pair of wick trimmers. And there we go. Didn't take long to get to here. No. But don't be fooled by this because it's not totally. It's and, not totally cured. No. And should it be like cool, like cool to the touch? Like, is I'm, that a cue at all? I mean, if you wanted to, you know, if you were making this with a friend and you needed to drive home, you could totally just. Yeah. You, you could take this to go for sure. Mm -hmm. You know, it's totally safe to move around. And what are we doing with the lid after this? Like, do you put the lid on the candle so the dust doesn't get in when you're not using it? Yep. Is that the idea? Exactly, because that is one thing you'll notice with any candle you have at home, it will pick up dust. Especially at my house. And this way you can reuse the jar later on for your other crafts, yeah. right? And for storage. So I did love, did want to include that lid with the... <laughs> We're still adding gems, jewels, cat hair, dog hair, <laughs> lint. <laughs> Hidden messes, you have beads, <laughs> bead storage. Yes. And there we go. This has been fabulous. Thank I am you so, so much. proud of your first smooth top. Look at that. But I shouldn't take that. Commitment. No, I'm gonna. We're, I think we're fine. I'm gonna. I'm gonna be brave and remove that. Uh, All right. Hey. So there we go. That looks G O O D. I love it. So I have three beautiful candles Aww, ready to go. It. We did it. That's awesome. Wow. Jesse, this is totally very doable. I love this for a fun weekend. You know, if girls are coming over or Absolutely. you want to have just a little fun thing to do with your kids or your grandkids, everybody gets a kit or you just share one. Try, if you're doing it with kids, you got to get each a kid. Don't even, <laughs> don't even with just one kid. Like, save yourself that hassle. Anyway. Um, thank you so much for coming all this well, This way. was super fun. And if you want to check out more of Jessie's kits, the face mask, the necklace, more candle fragrances, she's at makethisuniverse.com and you can check her out there. We've got a few more of the pomegranate and fur kits left on homemade.ca. We put a link up in the comments. Or Amanda, you could throw it up there again. If anybody is wanting to do that kind of uh, girls weekend, if you've got a bridal shower or just, you know, want to do something different with, you know, whoever, your sister, or your, your kids, this has been like, this is really fun and doable. Like, I mean, we've been on like less than an hour and yeah, we've already made two we've candles. We've already made two candles. So and, you know, using stuff you already have. So a little mason jar, a microwave. Mm -hmm. And in you did see us stirring with a, um, a thermometer. thermometer, but you can you just, don't have to, no, right? you can just use any metal utensil to stir. Okay. Even a, even a chopstick, like a metal a chopstick. Popsicle stick, coffee that would work stir great. stick. Exactly. But not a plastic stir stick. Probably not plastic, but if you're going to, you know, if you have a pop, popsicle stick, that'll probably work fine. Right. Yeah. Okay, cool. Any last, uh, any last words of wisdom on the candle making front i think you we really tapped your brain for the the trimming tip hot one yeah that's a good one yeah the nail clippers and now that i'm really happy that everyone got to see the exact moment where we poured that wax yeah. i know for a fact that everyone's confidence now is going to go way up when they're doing the process 
Um, and again, I'm makethisuniverse.com. You can find me on Instagram and TikTok. You can DM me anytime. I'm unfortunately always online. <laughs> so if you have any questions or, you know, you want advice for how to set up your event, just reach out. I'm always available. Nancy's asking, are you also located in Kingston? I'm a little outside of Kingston. But she did come here tonight with just a little short drive. So <laughs> you can find her online. She ships. Yep. And we've got some kits. If you're visiting the homemade shop, you can find her kits here um, and at homemade.ca. So thank you all. Thank you for being here. What thank a you I guys for being here. We appreciate you watching. And we're back Wednesday for our very last Watercolor Wednesday. So if you've registered for that, you can tune Well, even if you haven't registered, you can tune in and watch for free. We're going to be doing the last bit of our watercolor painting. One last question. Do you ship to the U.S.? I most certainly do ship to the U.S. So All right. U.S. and Canada. Yeah, That's great. Perfect. Thanks so much. Bye, everybody.